Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here for our capstone presentations um, to our distinguished guests. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jayla Lee, and I am a graduate student here in the School of Journalism and Media Studies. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Daisy Figueroa, and I'm also a graduate student here at the School of Journalism and Media Studies. And we are presenting our research study entitled Parents Online 2017. In a research conducted by author Lynn Hart, they found that 92% of teenagers go online every single day, and among them, 24% of teenagers go online almost constantly. In addition, nearly three quarters of teenagers have access to a mobile device with internet use. With such a high volume presence of teenagers online, growing up in the digital age has raised many new questions for media scholars, and especially involving cyber safety uh, and cyber bullying. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, oh, and in addition, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, continuing on the cyber bullying, let me tell you why it's an issue. <laughs> uh, in another study conducted by Lenhart, they found that one in four American teenagers witnessed cruel behavior on social media. And among them, 89% of that cool behavior was witnessed on Facebook. So these incidents are often referred to as cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is an intentional and aggressive act uh, carried out by a group or an individual of, uh, through electronic modes of contact repeatedly and over time um, against a victim who is unable to defend him or herself. So our study addresses the question, what role do parents play in growing up in the digital age? And we look, we, so overall, we are going to be, we examined parents online and how they were able to make a difference in their children's experiences, both on and offline. Through our investigation, we looked at se several aspects or variables. We looked at parent self-efficacy, -eff which is essentially a parent's belief that they were able to do something for their child, such as raising them and teaching them how to use social media. We looked at parent involvement in the media and mobile phone use and how these three aspects related to their perception of their child's self-esteem and bullying experiences. And we'd like to note that in our study, we communicated with parents via an online survey and asked them about their perception of their children's experiences. We did not speak to the actual children. So this research, which um, has never been done in the context of journalism and media studies, will hopefully empower parents to want to participate in more online activities with their children. So um, I'll explain a little bit more about the framework of our study, which is social cognitive theory. So social cognitive theory is a social psychology theory that was developed by Albert Bandura, and it explains how children learn through example. Um, this is possible through, the, uh, through three concepts that influence one another to determine learning. And these concepts are personal, behavioral, and environmental aspects. So a person's personal beliefs and attitudes can influence or be influenced by the behaviors of others, as well as um, ob observations and perceptions of one's social environment. Prior to actually issuing our survey, we conducted background research in relation to social media, cyberbullying, and parent involvement in the media. From previous research, we found that when it comes to cyberbullying, self a child's self-esteem and loneliness have, have a significant relationship with whether a child is a cyberbully victim. For example, if a child has low levels of self-esteem and high levels of loneliness, they are more likely to be a cyberbully victim. And then we found out more about what, where the parents play a role, which I'm sure might resonate with some of you. We found that the most common way for parents to interact with their children using social media is to either restrict uses, control the content that their children consume, or use it to monitor the whereabouts of their children. Very little research exists on parents actually co-using social media with their children in a collaborative way and an educational way, which is important because 91% of, of teenagers own mobile devices with internet access, and 93% of parents own a smartphone. And this led us to question, if so many parents own smartphones, why are they still raising their children in, uh, just by restricting use of social media and not becoming more involved. And this brings us back to the concept of parent self-efficacy. Uh, because of this new phenomenon of children being on their phones constantly, uh, we found that they often know more about social media than their parents do, which 
brings back to self-efficacy. The parents don't have as much confidence in using it, so they're not able to teach them how to use it properly. So, um, furthermore, uh, Lennart also um, explained that there's actually very little correlation between um, restrictive parental interventions on <coughs> cell phone use and the consequential behaviors of their children. However, research does show that a child who co-views educational material with their parent is able to gain additional knowledge that they're not able to get um, if they don't co-view with their parent. So based on social cognitive theory, again, stating that children learn through example and our, pre and our background research, we came up with the following hypotheses, predictions, and research questions moving forward. Um, we hypothesized that adult involvement in the media, mobile phone use, and self-efficacy for parents would have a significant relationship with their perception of their child's self-esteem and whether their child is bullied. Through our research, we also um, inquired through two research questions if there was a significant relationship between um, uh, social cognitive theory um, and the perception of self-esteem and, or I apologize, I apologize. Our research questions actually asked if there was a significant relationship between the grade level of the child and um, perceptions of their cyberbullying and self-esteem. So um, to answer our hypotheses and research questions, our study used a survey design with a convenient sample of 261 respondents that were gathered from an online database known as Amazon Mechanical Turk or MTurk. Um, MTurk is an online workplace where individuals can perform tasks and uh, for payment. And so our respondents were paid 25 cents to participate in our study and take our survey. Um, um, so to uh, measure the different variables in our study, we uh, created a survey uh, using various scales and indices that have been used in past and relevant research. And our study took, uh, was conducted over the span of two weeks. Um, this past March, under the approval of our Institutional Review Board. Um, the only prerequisite we had for our respondents was that they be um, internet-using parents to at least one teenager. So roughly 48% of our respondents were fathers, and about 42% of our respondents were mothers. The average age of a parent was 39 years old, and age for the parent ranged from 22 to 57. All right, now on to the results. So initially, before we address our hypotheses and our statistical analyses, thank you, uh, we looked at, again, at the how age related to self-esteem and bullying. Uh, and to just sum that up quickly, since we're short on time, uh, we found that there was a significant relationship for upperclassmen, so high school juniors and high school seniors. Um, parents, on average, um, rated a lower self-esteem level and higher levels of, cyber, of bullying for high school juniors. And when it came to high school seniors, parents rated their children with higher self-esteem levels and lower levels of bullying. And we assume this could possibly be due to maturity, and as a child gets older, they increase in self-esteem. And we would recommend this for future research as well. And onto our actual hypotheses, um, we, we conducted predictive statistical tests um, involving parent self-efficacy, adult involvement in the media, and mobile phone use, and found that they were significant predictors um, both to um, whether a child was bullied and also to their self-esteem levels. So overall, we were very happy with our results and to find that high levels of parent self-efficacy truly does make a difference for a child's experiences both online and offline. Yeah, so to recap, the goal of our study was to better understand how social cognitive theory plays a role in the connection between parents online um, and cyberbullying. And so the fact that our hypotheses were supported is really good because not only does it show consistency with prior research, but it also provides support um, for the role that social cognitive theory plays between online media behaviors and um, cyberbullying. And so overall, our results indicate that there is a connection between, um, between uh, model behaviors of parents online and uh, their children's personal experience with cyberbullying and perceived self-esteem. And there's just a few limitations we want to point out. Uh, one, that this we must address that this was a convenient sample from Amazon Turk, um, but we also would like to point out, although it's not a representative sample, the whole theme of our study is parents online. So every parent that takes the survey is already online, which is the exact demographic that we were looking for. And overall, we just hope this 
our research can be stepping stones for a more positive experience of growing up in the digital age. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.